I have been recording for well since I was 17 and I am 36 now. I currently run my own studio as well as working for Expansion but I've always had I suppose a, an interest in drums above mm. any other instrument. Um, I just find them exciting, they're loud. Um, I think it's probably the main thing I like about them, they're loud, I think I like loud things. And it's just a challenging instrument to record. Mm. And so many people have so many ideas about the way it should be done and what constitutes a good drum sound. And I just think it's one of those instruments that you can spend a lifetime recording and never get the same sound twice and never really ever satisfied. You can always sort of move, go somewhere else with it. So I think that's why I like drums so much, because that's just a challenge. Air, I've, well, I chose Air for quite a few reasons. One, I've been here before and I know the facility. It's got a fantastic live room. Um, it's got a good history. Um, the people are great. The rooms sound good. The control room's excellent. And more importantly, really, for what we're doing here is it's got an excellent desk. Um, mm. It's a very unique console. There's only one left in the world. There was three made originally. Um, it's a Neve Custom. I do believe Jeff Emmerich, who was the Beatles engineer, had a lot to do with the input on the design of the console. And George Martin, I do believe, had quite a lot of input into choosing things like the frequency selection for the EQs and that sort of thing. It's a very musical console. It's not modern by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, a, it's just a very good, solid sounding desk. The drummers. We have two drummers in this session. There's a chap called Emre Ramazan Ulu. Emre approached us initially, uh, interested in getting involved in BFD in some way, and, and he's a fantastic drummer. How, uh, how, how high can there. you count as yeah. a drummer? What is the maximum that you can you count? count to four. It's perfect being a drummer. Okay. <laughs> One, wasn't it 90 two, today? three, more, two. <laughs> <laughs> seven, eight's good as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> and a very good engineer as well, his own right, he does a lot of work with some interesting people. So he's great to have on board because he knows both sides of the desk as it were. You know, he can sit in front of it as a performer and he also knows what's going on behind, so he's not really phased by the whole process. <sighs> not jaded. <laughs> uh, but Emre unfortunately could only do five days with us because he had other commitments and Darren very kindly stepped in and has done a sterling job. And, I think it's going to benefit because he has quite a different style. Emre's, um, Emre doesn't hit the drums very hard, um, as he says it, tone over volume. And uh, Darren is a bit more of a rocker, I suppose. So we've kind of angled some of the kits and the cymbals around that, um, some of the smaller, more delicate stuff uh, we've had Emre play, and some of the bigger, heavier cymbals and heavier rides, which can, can take a bit of a thrashing, we've had Darren play, so I think it's worked out quite nicely because there's a couple of different sorts of sounds there. <coughs> Microphones. Uh, we have a lot. There's a D112. I've got a 57, uh, a Neumann KM84, Electro Voice RE20, a Neumann FET47, so a CAD VX2. Direct symbol channels are also KM84s. It's a 421. It's a pair of Manly references. A pair of Coles 4038s, which were a ribbon microphone. A pair of uh, original C12 AKGs and a pair of Sony C800s. Drums wise, there's 11 kits, that's kicks and tom sets, 19 snares, all of those cymbals, and uh, nine hi-hats I do believe we've got them at the moment. And to see all of the, those snares and all of those kits in one room at one time is, is pretty full on. I think, I think you know, a lot of the guys that have been popping into Studio One, even the regular crew around here have been like, whoa, you guys really are doing a lot of drums. <laughs> we have one of Ringo Starr's uh, Black Oyster Ludwigs, as played by him, which is rather nice to get hold of. We also have a, a spiral Vista light that used to belong to uh, John Bonham. We also have matched that with a full set of pasty cymbals, um, which he used to play, so there's a quite authentic sound there. We have a pork pie kit. We have a DW Master Series kit. We have a Pearl Custom kit. We have a Pearl Masterworks kit. We have an Orange County kit. We have a Tamboro kit. We have a Rogers kit. Oh, there's a Gretsch kit, a round badge, yeah. old, old Gretsch, which is lovely, lovely drum. The cymbals, uh, of which there's three chinas of various sizes, including one with rivets. There's three splashes, nine ride cymbals, 
um, comprising flat sand ones with bells and at the moment there's 10 normal cymbals. Snares, we've got birch, mahogany, brass, um, we've got the Zildjian uh, cymbal brass snare, we've got aluminium snares, there's piccolos, there's vented snares, there's a whole range. I've kind of made an effort to get a, a nice selection of damped drums um, using O-rings or moon gel or a bit of gaffer tape and some really ringy snares and we've also experimented a lot with different tunings so we've got some loose deep drums and some, some very pingy drums so hopefully a very wide selection of snares which is going to cover a, a whole range of different styles of music including lots of sort of dance sort of stuff um, jungle and drum and bass and that type of thing some of the more high-pitched tuned snares will be very suitable for so not just sort of rock or that type of thing hopefully a, a real sort of something for everybody range of sounds dub top Um, but the process, uh, basically set up the kit like you would a normal kit, mic it all up as you would the normal kit, go into the control room, um, set all the levels and I tend to record, um, I don't record everything loud, um, all the levels onto Pro Tools are sent at a, a natural level for the drum kit. Uh, that way when you play back the kit with all your faders at 0 dB as it will be in uh, BFD uh, it just sounds like the drum is there. Okay, and we are rolling. Once you've done that <clears throat> it's just a case of hitting record and the drummer sits there very patiently and hits the drum as hard as he can and continues to hit it once the drums and the room noise has all died away, the, the reverb and the overtones have all vanished, um, hits it again at a slightly lower level and then does it all the way down. It's a very unnatural process for the drummer, um, they're not used to sort of um, doing that sort of thing, drummers like to make noise and hit drums quickly and have fun and it's, uh, it's quite tedious, it's, it's you know, it's, can... you see it on their faces as they get really bored. And now it's quite difficult for the drummer to get the levels precise. There isn't, it's not a machine. Um, so the way I've run it is basically we do it in sets of ten. So we do ten hits, loud, quiet, loud, quiet. And the idea is is that because there's natural variation between each bank of ten, by the time you've um, sliced all those up into all their bits and ordered them into the right velocity layer, you get a nice smooth curve. It's very exacting. Um, when you're, especially with the cymbals, cymbals have very long, very long uh, tails which can go on upwards for, especially some of the larger rides, two, two and a half minutes if you really let them ring out. Um, a cymbal takes about an hour to put on to, to record. When you've got, what, 25, 30 cymbals, you can appreciate that um, that's quite a long time sitting there waiting for the tails. <whistles> and of course, if the drummer creaks or the stand creaks or the chair creaks or uh, there's a fly, we've had flies in the room. We've found a bug in BFD2 and we're going to take him out. It's hard work catching those guys. So every time little things like that happen when you're recording singles, you really, really get slightly frustrating. Once you've done all of the recording, it all has to be edited and it's all kept multi channel, obviously and we have to go through and slice every single drum hit up so we look for where the, the initial transient of the drum is and we edit there and then you put a little fade at the end just before the next hit then you order all the velocity layers and that all then goes into a piece of software called BFD Congeal which stitches all the files together into one large monolithic file which is then the, the, the file that BFD uses to play back the audio Fuck, we need to go right Jesus. now otherwise there will be no pints for us <laughs> That's it. Priorities. It's mine's time. Oh god. It's 8, 10.40. Priorities. It's been a hard day taking photographs. We've got to, you know, the hard work is here. We need a drink.
That's it. Finito. <laughs>